Hi, um, my name's Calypso and I'm from the Institute. Uh, we curate uh, brilliantly inspired talks and workshops across London and uh, we've curated this year's Pulse. Everyone loves to shop at Liberty. It's the destination store that holds a very special place at the heart of London's retail. We all own a piece of Liberty, so envy Liz Sylvester, who's in charge of the visual merchandising for this iconic store. It's not that simple. The shape and quirks make this a challenging job, and it can be a coincidence that while and it can't be a coincidence that while studying for her masters, Liz specialized in fabric installation. Here to reveal the secrets behind the Liberty prop cupboard, Liz Sylvester. Hello, happy Sunday. I, I hopefully don't get too close to this microphone. Um, I suppose what I'm going to talk about today, and, and there's probably going to be many questions that sort of all come in between, is, is mainly my windows at Liberty that I suppose they're not just my windows, they're my team's windows. Um, we are probably about 26 um, and I see everything that we do creatively obviously is, is comes from my creative lead and some of Ed's head as well. Um, but I suppose and I hope and what I'm going to try and show you today is, is obviously the windows that we have shown in the last two years and how I am trying to blend what a department store is and what Liberty is, but also develop from a brand point of view, recognizably bringing through um, the, the genius of, I, I suppose, many artists that we work with, galleries that we work with, uh, the talent from the hands of our own team that we work with, but also sort of how we present a theme or an idea through a window display um, to 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 pull people in and to and to un understand and enjoy liberty. So I suppose I'm just going to talk hopefully naturally about some of the windows that we've put on in the last two years and, and I've put them in chronological order um, from the first window that I did through to I suppose the last window that is in liberty now that you can go and see. Um, you may see how I've developed or my team has developed but I'm please put your hand up and interject um, all the way through if there's any sort of questions um, that you have um, particularly. One of the, I suppose, unique things that we do is, is we combine everything within our windows. But I'm going to start and then we'll, we'll see where we go. It's I suppose it's quite difficult to actually show everything that Liberty is and we move through um, from doing this would be called a lifestyle window in a sense of, of representing um, something through colour, shape, simplicity, mood um, but it shows everything from a piece of stationery through to um, a piece of furniture and maybe a Prada jacket hung on the wall. Creating a window is very much about you, you're constantly styling something so you could see this in a page probably from Sunday Times style just selling one or two or three pieces um, but we set this up all of the time we're curating elements from all over Liberty and pulling it together as a, as a picture as a as a an artwork itself for you to, to you to experience and understand This is my second window at Liberty, and um, we wanted, I suppose, it's summertime, it's tourist time. We are connecting with um, the great British public. We are thinking about what's happening in, um, in London at that time. And for us, I'm also showing our, our key different categories. And for us, we, we sort of, we, we start with a, with a quite, a silly brainstorm of, of, of what means what and um, we pull together this story of sport. The walls here are um, astroturf um, made up into a stripe um, and you know 
the cricket legs of the bat of the table that is displayed is part of a sport but it is all starts with a tiny little drawing and I suppose when you see it as as a, as a consumer and you you view this window there's you know we spend months and months actually sort of sketching it out and thinking well it's a cricket ground and we've got you know it's it's a game it's a mat and then how do we sort of develop that into an environment that is, is simple for you to shop from and, and read from, but again, is has int interest. It's, there's layers and layers of texture. There's you know unique pieces of furniture that are created every single time we do a window. So you know obviously this table exists for maybe four or five weeks, and it's just a stationary platform. Um, but it was designed specifically for stationary to show pencils, notebooks. Um, and, and curate it together but it's only it, it, it's part of a bigger picture much part of a bigger picture which is almost an ab it's an abstract environment and um, that hopefully um, pulls you in and engages you this window um, and this is where I started really to sort of bring through um, how can we reinvent um, print as Liberty's campaign for its future. I think one of the things that like my mum would always say to me, she said, well, you know, the thing that, that, that make Liberty means to her is print. And, and I think so much of what a brand is, 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 is visual and it needs to sort of come from the heart of that. And how, how I've brought print back into Liberty is, has to happen in lots of different ways. So, this window was a new season window. It was predominantly focused on um, pre-season fashion for women's and men's wear. But you think about the time of year. So we're post Christmas. We are pro post all of that glitter and noise, and you want to sort of shift the focus into something really, really bright and white and clean and new start, new beginning to the new year. And um, this was a beautiful um, print from our interiors new collection and we basically um, extrapolated it into a paper installation which was fundamentally meat hooks. I had probably about 2,000 meat hooks coming from the top of the windows um, um, that suspended thousands and thousands of blown up repeated laser cut shapes but within that there was it was a f almost like a frozen frosted environment so very much about what this window did was it sort of it was a it was a it was a moment in time where it froze those clean new products that you that that, that were all, all across the store really um, so there was things sort of vac packed in um, those wonderful things that you know when you've got you know, too many clothes and they you know you need to like put them in the attic and actually get rid of them all vac packed um, beauty items vac packed t-shirts but again every time there's so many little genius ideas for display that come up and out of a window that then go inside to liberty and then there's more simplistic approaches and there's 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 different customers to speak to um, flowers of liberty has become massively successful um, over the last couple of years but again in the way that you display and repeat and show clarity of your product is something that again it's approach an approach that you take a different approach each time you do a new, a new concept so flowers of liberty was very much about putting the new branding out there in terms of our ship and our logo but also the the way that you use items on repeat we just simply created a pegboard but we also created windows and illumination within that and print so that the windows glowed with uh, it was a frosted vinyl with print that at night time it looked as powerful as it did at daytime but again the product was right in your face right re completely repeated um, and there was a just a beautiful simplicity to it It transcends in store as well, and we collaborated uh, collaborated with Zoe Bradley to do the flower installations, which are the suspended pieces. So again, the print from the packaging was then laser cut into 3D flowers suspended from the ceiling, um, which is a different element of that inside the store environment and keeps you engaged and traveling through. A 
again an interiors installation um, and, and these are all in order. Our secret garden collection, um, basically, I mean, I just chose one print to extrapolate, but again, it, it, we're creating a woodland where, where you felt drawn in um, by a sofa, a, a box of wallpaper. How do you make that into a window is actually quite a difficult problem. And I think um, the simpler that you can make it, the, 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 the better it comes across. I'm going to whiz through some of these that we're very famous for our arts and crafts. But again, it's, it's, it's a skill that is, comes natural to us and, and, and my team is actually just from an interiors point of view, how do you put these pieces of arts and crafts together? This one was a, a, a wonderful collaboration with a French illustrator for the relaunch of our haberdashery department. But I suppose what this shows is, is the talent of, of, the, of my team. And it was the home team that took over this project really. We found the illustrator and then um, up in our prop cupboard we began to make things. So um, the uh, woolen cloud that you see um, just attached to the wall um, was made by Debbie Ellis in my team and she is, she is she's a wonderful maker and I suppose probably 70% of them um, trained as artists like me or as um, fabric makers um, or illustrators but Debbie's specialism is um, floristry and, and um, textiles so there was so much of this window that she actually just started with bundles and bundles and bundles of wool on the floor and we we have a huge cupboard um, on the roof which is categorized from everything from corgis through to glassware through to taxidermy swans um, there is an enormous fabric archive which goes on for miles um, it is a treasure trove up there of, of stuff that we dip into all the time but it's also a space for making and I think it's one of the the most unique things about Liberty's windows is that we we do actually make things ourselves. There's so many things that we need help with from contractors to actually build the overall structure, but some of the most of the very interesting points of, of the display mechanisms and the displays themselves are actually made by myself and my team hand making things upstairs on the roof or in the basement in Muji, knitting things together or cutting things or spraying things or lining things up. Um, and I'm going to point out loads more of them, but I think, you know, art installations happen. Um, all of these stands here today happen you know it takes time to actually set it all up in the right way and actually make it work connecting fashion with art and obviously then a trend and there is a our windows hopefully go through a through a through a period of chaos into simplicity but it's it's something that is you always have to respond to I will go and see all of the catwalk shows twice a year so we'll do New York first then we'll do we'll be back home in London then we'll go to Milan then we'll go to Paris but we are constantly absorbing the environment of our creative world to actually respond in the right in the right way uh, we buy things in a certain way we buy things that are right for liberty and they're curated but then I have to pull them together this is a London Fashion Week window um, and we were responding to British brands and created and we didn't want to use mannequins so we, we created a wonderful abstract wardrobe structure um, where we then created the hangers that went inside of that and it was just a very very simple hanging and it could have it could work as a shop for its, itself if you took it inside as an environment but also thinking about display and leveling and, and Every time we do a window, we, we find an, a new technique for something in the way that we can communicate it so you can read it clearly. This is one of my favourite ones, which actually is a home and lifestyle window where, again, um, we I'm constantly trying to blend through that Liberty print and what is Liberty style through the windows in, in a sense that sort of is underlying at all times. Again, this is uh, probably Debbie's skills of actually 
scissoring wool on site in the window to actually sort of unveil um, the way that we communicate through graphics. And I think what's interesting with this window is, is actually that it was so layered with with print and noise and texture, we had to be very, very careful about how much we actually put in there. And um, so there's not really that much product in there it, because it was so layered with beautiful print and noise and color. We had to make, work in a very abstract way in the way that we actually sort of presented it back out again. Um, none of the branding was actually on the glass itself, all of the branding, and, and we do that quite a lot, a lot of the branding was actually integrated into the set walls and the way that it was, I think, I suppose you take a hay, a hay set of stationery and merge it with Bruce's Oriental rugs and some crazy Liberty print, how do you actually make any clarity with that, so we have to sort of work in an in, in, in a super futuristic, very clean, clean way with crazy noise and print to actually make it make sense. So Christmas, you probably have seen most of these, but um, one of the biggest undertaking for my team um, was I wanted to cover the walls with giant gold sequins. Not, and not only were they gold sequins, um, they were la boat laser cut gold sequins and I needed probably 5,000 plus of them nailed on the back wall of, of these windows and we did it ourselves so normally I think if you were Selfridges or Harrods you would employ um, a team of builders to do that but you know probably most people would be shocked if I told you what my annual window budget what is we generate cash for that budget through working with artists working with galleries to and and brands to actually give us the money and the tools to actually create the windows that we do um, but um, so much of it we do ourselves and actually manufacture in Liberty. The ship mast obviously this theme comes inside but I'm probably more interested in talking about the windows themselves so you can see at the back um, we battened out and it took probably four or five of my team just two nights to actually batten out the back of the windows with these little shelf levels and I had we specifically ch choose every single tiny element so um, they were little copper um, copper nails and I had thousands of them and then all of the all of the discs were pre laser cut and they were merged they were not all gold some of them were matte gold some of them were shimmer gold and then some of them were laser cut but I had probably about 10 people with hammers and and little copper <laughs> nails and we went not knocking in these little secret and they were, were going mad by about day four but they they then we braced fans in the ceiling and then they started to shimmer um, you can buy this off the peg but you can only get tiny sequins and we're doing an amazing set of windows for the launch of absolutely fabulous the movie but because 20th century fox has given me some cash i've actually been able to manufacture it in a different way but we're going to do some crazy stuff that will go with that i'll get to that in a minute Things like the gold snow in the bottom is was was a genius find, and this was something that I looked everywhere for, and I thought, surely gold snow exists. Why why can't I find it? It it doesn't exist. It really doesn't exist. So we had to make it ourselves. So I had probably like ten bins on the roof of Liberty, and we probably about three days before. Um, we found this stuff called vermaculite and it's actually sort of um, something that you mix with your soil to actually make your garden healthier and it actually looks like gold snow so we just bought a whole load of glitter a whole load of um, flitter glitter and then started like piling up the bins and mixing them round and then basically tip them in the windows and, and it worked but You've, you've got to really think out the box in actually terms of materiality to actually find something. Because so you're playing the scale and you want things to feel real, but you also want to make people think, oh, what is that? Like, really, what is that stuff? And, you know, it, it, it's just common things that exist in the garden centre. Windows work amazingly at, at night, um, and this is a very, very simple window for... Um, wild about liberty and it's just a it's, it's, it's a simple scarf window They're f all I said to the team was I want them to look a little bit like birds and off you go 
but again, it's a, just a very, very simple approach. Layered glazed graphic, animal print went onto the floor and onto the street. That's something that a lot of people don't do, but is absolutely possible. And they glowed like little floating birds. Planting has become huge in retail um, and hopefully we were doing it before many people, many other people were and we did this window before Viton did it at, at Milan Design Week and totally took over with it but again it's quite difficult to put plants in a window because they breathe and they sweat and they do all sorts of other things and they don't stay alive. But again this is the layered backdrop of print during London Fashion Week, it's probably you know when we started to see floral taking over in a sense in fashion um, then how do we blend it and make it ours this was an archive print that I turned into a wallpaper that probably no one has ever seen again then the simplicity of display and actually sort of making making a window sell a product out is something that you you will always be challenged to do and coming up with one simple mechanism of showing a category very very well and using color to draw you in and branding to draw you in and a simple thing that we did was we color blocked it we made little carpet shelves for ifis laser print v shelves which were laser cut metal ridges which had the same print as the product and took over the entire run and it was a patchwork of carpets mixed matched layered onto them but it's it sold out four weeks but it was also a very simple way of presenting what the brand was at the beginning which is the heart of Liberty London accessories and then we switched it very quickly into what became patchwork um, by having the ability to color block it at the beginning where you had blue on orange but then when we introduced the new collection um, which was um, about a patchwork of all of these prints we created a series of assets so we were able to switch around like a big jigsaw puzzle all of these little um, shelves and carpets which made sense with with the product itself so I mean Liberty was 140 years old last year and and, and we thought well how are we going to deal with this so I thought well Let's find 140 amazing props from the Liberty prop cupboard and wrap them in 140 different prints and stuff the windows with them and then layer in every single printed item that we do in the whole store and try and curate it like that. So we went as a team to um, one of our favourite sort of supporting um, suppliers and they gave over their whole studio to us. I went up to our, we have probably three cupboards of stuff and they range in size. So in Liberty on the roof we have medium sized props which are super wacky and then in the Muji basement we have practical props which are signage holders, glassware, things like that. And then up in Manchester at the time I have probably two football pitches the size of this space full of furniture which we are constantly rotating and oddly enough I had to move that space all the way to um, just out of North London uh, in the last six months and it was an absolute nightmare but um, we've done it and, and now we know exactly what we've got but anyway we went up there as a team and we picked probably 140 of the things that we could fit in the window and they're all completely different so there was everything from bicycles to swans to knotty um, wardrobes to um, odd beach balls to uh, turkeys covered in encrust crusted jewels they were and then we wrapped them in 140 prints but it took us probably two weeks to do that but we went up to the warehouse and we sat as a team and literally just had piles and piles of fabrics and started wrapping things but, you know why I don't I don't know it looked cool <laughs> I mean, there was even a hula hoop wrapped in Liberty print, but, you know, and that was very, very time-consuming. But if you think about how many objects were in there, there was probably a good um, 20 objects in each window. And actually, the amount of time that it actually takes for only 26 people to be wrapping constantly for two weeks, it was a lot of bloody wrapping. And then you may have seen the maypole but it was something that I really really loved doing and, and, it, and it looked great and we've, we've used it in, in many other many other um, places so we took it to Goodwood for the VIP tent afterwards and it's still going it's, it's part of the ceiling on the third floor now and it's, it's, it's been a great thing to build 
um, but it was um, celebrating 140 of our best prints and you know but to work out how to do something like that is is just a dream of mine and it's a wonderful thing to do um, it took us two nights to get it in um, we recreate the flower shop at the top of it um, in and, and, and it was recycling um, a prop as well so it was the ship mass but then I thought well what can I turn this mast into next? And then we, and then we thought, oh, I know it's May and it's our birthday. Well, what better than a maypole? But it was super, 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 super slick getting this in, and the guys that helped help, help me build it were just wonderful. Every single one of these was rolled up, ready, with a little clip at the end, and there was little hooks all the way around that top piece, and we and we hoisted it, and it literally probably went up in a, just a couple of hours and then as it started to sort of fan out we just got more and more and more excited it just looked better and better and better we absolutely loved it so again and then we've probably been back to Milan again a year later and then we started sort of you know thinking well what are people going to do next and then and, and I suppose you have to the maypole was very similar and you can see some of the synergy between you know this repeated immersive environment that we were sort of expected to do um, and that immersive space I think costed an installation at Milan Design which, which was just white, white paper essentially it's just a, an amazing tunnel that you walked inside that was illuminated and you got involved in and then sort of how can we translate some of those trends or those things that were right for liberty into our windows so then fashion week became again it wasn't a rip off of the installation or hopefully mine was better um, but it then sort of you know we learned from the maypole and then we did the mini one and this was again scissors out lametta curtain mixed with thousands and thousands and thousands of meters of mustard mustard ribbon so again this was one of my favourite plays. We worked with the National um, Theatre to do this. Uh, Bonnie Christie is an amazing set designer. I don't know if anyone's seen the curious incident of the dog in the night time. And for us, this was a, another Fashion Week window, which was which was interactive. Um, it was a light show. It was a, you know, how do we sort of get across that sense of autism with fashion in a window with mannequins and madness and drawing? Um, but hopefully we pulled it off. It became a live window at some point as well. Then Christmas just gone, so I really then started to go nuts with the print and then sort of we created the home of Liberty and actually we're, we're, we're going to be working with the Royal Opera House and doing the Nutcracker this Christmas. But again, we'll be repeating this sort of home of Liberty we'll, sense of branding will come back again and, and, and make even more sense. It's our press event, so it stemmed from um, the Chesham Cabinet House, which again, I took inspiration for this, this window from our, our interiors collection, but it was all about the House of Liberty and creating a home and different, the windows became different rooms. Again, then we recycled another prop again and for the home of Christmas, we turned then this pole again into a giant chandelier, which was like a jellyfish. I was at Fashion Week and, and saw a crazy installation at, um, I think it was um, Museum of Modern Art, just in a general space. I thought, that's the solution. We'll turn it into a giant chandelier. So windows just gone. So this is this year and the beginning of year we worked with Gus and Stella who are amazing and how do you bring technology and film into a window display and we hopefully did it in quite a clever way we animated our Liberty product that then went inside these giant props that actually turned and and did all sorts of um, wacky wonderful things but I suppose there's that connection between movement and then the visual is is connected in one space I've collaborated with two great brands this year. We collaborated with Acne Studios. They took over on my windows and we went over to Stockholm where I think hopefully, if you didn't see it, you can see it online. They created this incredible wind tunnel of snow and it was a moving feast. Um, but um, more and more windows, and, and I will continue to do it, are becoming more interactive spaces. Um, Acne um, produced movement and sound at the same time as, as using video and it, and it was such a wonderful project to work with them on. Again, this is our accessory mix that, that happened 
just before the windows that are in now. Um, and this is just a simple piece of technology. It's an LED, it's an LED uh, light form that we turned into an amazing drawing that literally took, again, a couple of nights to actually suspend, but it was literally my pencil. I want it to look like that, but what, how do we make that 3D? How do we make it work? Um, we found a, a wonderful spring manufacturer from Germany who's become my favourite new supplier who can make anything out of metal and he produced a thousand springs from the ceiling to actually capsulate um, um, products within this mix. My brief for this was um, a neon playground of accessories. Our press day is just gone and obviously after everything that Gucci has done, the world is changing in fashion. It's, it's all going to be about maximalism. More is more, louder, noisier, shinier, more floral, pinker the better. Um, so when we presented um, fashion um, to the press this year, um, I carpeted the whole of my third floor in pink carpet, also the elevators. Um, and began to bring this noise into this environment. I'm not going to talk too much about that, otherwise I'll give my ideas away for this <laughs> my next Fashion Week windows. Um, and at the moment, um, if you go to Liberty, you can see, and this is this is something that we've done, I've tried to do more and more, and so you this is the relationship with, with how we sort of sold out those Liberty iconic accessories um, for the duration of a four-week window. Um, We've just relaunched our beauty, our jewellery hall, so we've obviously refreshed the inside of it. But we wanted to really make a strong statement that we do do jewellery and we do exclusive jewellery, and it's absolutely amazing. So I commissioned again an artist to um, vac form these giant shapes, collaborated with our best unknown jewellery brands, and we they all we 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 design these uh, these amazing space rocks for as vehicles to hold their jewellery. Um, it's super simple but super powerful and it's been very, very um, brilliant for us in terms of sales um, inside Liberty. That's the end. Thank you very much, Liz. <laughs> I hope I made a bit of sense. Have we got uh, any questions from the floor? You're obviously always looking for your new unique idea, but how much do you keep your eyes open what your competitors are doing? How much do you look at Harvey Nichols? I don't actually, and I think it's important not to. Um, I think it's important for Liberty not to, and I think we were in Paris on Friday just doing a mannequin appointment, and, and we do do all the stores, um, but I like to look at ones that are relevant for me. Um, I find it important to, to breed a unique creative team that is actually developing our brand from the inside. We do, of course, go out and see what other brands do, but I actually encourage them to probably let more look out, more look at what is out there culturally um, in fashion and architecture and art um, and bring that back to me and work out those clever things that we do in a separate way. Um, it's more important. How far ahead do you plan? So, for example, Christmas, what's coming up next, uh, 17, is that already yeah. in the pipeline? So we are um, collaborating with the Royal Opera House for doing Nutcracker. Um, we signed that deal probably um, six weeks ago, but I knew probably two months ago that that would be my theme. So we are at drawing stages now, we're at um, manufacturing giant snowflakes on repeat, and um, now, yeah, so they will be fully drawn up and ready for production probably in the next six weeks. Thank you very much Liz, okay. your job sounds fab. <laughs>